Well, yes, uh, just about an hour and a half ago or so, we got uh, King Charles leaving the gates of Buckingham Palace, heading back to Clarence House to meet up with uh, Camilla, Queen Consort, after what has been another very busy day for the new monarch down here, as he met with the 14 high commissioners for the other realms and territories that he is head of state of, and of course also the uh, Secretary General general of the Commonwealth, uh, Baroness Patricia, Patricia Scotland, uh, also met uh, in an audience with the King. So a busy day for him. And tomorrow, of course, he is due after meeting with uh, members of both Houses of Parliament, both the Lords and the Commons, in Westminster Hall. He's due to fly up to Edinburgh to join his sister and his brothers there and we will get uh, what will be quite an extraordinary sight in uh, a week of uh, really quite poignant and extraordinary images when the children of the late monarch Queen Elizabeth II will walk behind her coffin as it leaves the house, uh, Holyrood House, uh, to go to St Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh for this service of remembrance and thanks for Her Majesty the Queen. Earlier in the day, it was 10 a.m. this morning that that um, coffin left Balmoral Castle. It was carried by six of the Queen's own gamekeepers. Very poignant sight indeed as they carried her coffin from her beloved Balmoral Castle and placed it on that hearse for the drive 175 miles through the Scottish countryside over to Aberdeen, then down to Dundee, then Perth, before finally arriving in the capital city where the body of the late monarch was taken to the palace of Holyrood House. Uh, as I say, we'll go to St Giles Cathedral tomorrow. It's due to be there uh, for 24 hours to lie and rest in the cathedral and there will be an opportunity then for members of the public over those 24 hours to go to walk past the coffin and to pay their respects before of course on the Tuesday uh, the coffin of Her Majesty then being taken down to uh, RAF Northolt again where it will make the journey to Buckingham Palace staying overnight here again on the Tuesday night before on the Wednesday then being sent uh, on that gun carriage, a top a gun carriage uh, with again the members of the royal family, many of them walking behind the Queen, uh, uh, the late Queen as I should say, as she makes uh, her way on top of that gun carriage to the Westminster Hall for the, the, the period where she will uh, be lying in state, we're told then, for four days in Westminster Hall. And again, an opportunity for many thousands of members of the public to again file past that coffin before the funeral on Monday the 19th of September. And how has the mood been where you've been today, Mark? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's quite uh, odd uh, in a way, Andrew, because what's been happening is people have come here, the, the kind of the initial shock uh, to some extent has dissipated, but people, of course, are still very sombre and reflective about, uh, you know, what Her Majesty meant to them. So people are uh, coming, they're, they're laying their, their flowers, some of them outside the gates to Buckingham Palace. I should say that a big policing operation is now in place here after a few days. It really is uh, going like clock clockwork now. They are stopping crowds on the mall, uh, on both sides on the pavements, uh, heading down the mall. They're stopped and then they're allowed through to filter down towards the gates of Buckingham Palace. Uh, some laying their flowers there, but they're only lying there temporarily. And then in about 24 hours or so, they're moved to a huge floral garden uh, which is taking shape in nearby Green Park. Many of the people uh, that are going to pay their respects to Buckingham Palace are also going to uh, the floral garden in Green Park.